Word is special. It is the beating heart of free enterprise values in Canada. It's that place that is the, the magnet for hard workers and risk takers and entrepreneurs. I think Albertans are looking for leadership that will, without apology, defend and fight for our economic interests because they, in fact, are the economic interests of Canada. Ladies and gentlemen, the leader of the UCP and your new premier, Jason Kenney. fellow Albertans. What a great day for the province of Alberta. Friends, today our great province has sent a message to Canada and the world. Alberta is open for business. Friends, this democratic decision is a message to all of those Albertans who are struggling, to the unemployed, to those who have given up, to the small business owners barely hanging on, to the young people who got their degrees and their diplomas but can't find work, to those who have lost their homes and their hope after years of economic decline and stagnation. To them, to them we send this message. Help is on the way and hope is on the horizon. Albertans, friends, 
Albertans, Albertans have elected a government that will be obsessed with getting this province back to work. A team, a team that will do everything in our power every single day to create tens of thousands of good jobs by restoring investor confidence, by unleashing the job-creating power of our entrepreneurs, by, by, taking, by taking Alberta from being the slowest moving and most over-regulated economy in Canada to being one of the freest and fastest moving economies in the world. So tonight, Tonight, I send an important message to businesses everywhere. If you want to benefit from what will be the lowest taxes in Canada, if you want to benefit from a, from a government that will cut its red tape burden by one third, if you want to benefit from Canada's most educated population and a deep culture of enterprise and innovation, Help us come here, invest here, create jobs here. We knew the Alberta advantage here. And tonight, and tonight, we send a message to our fellow Canadians from coast to coast. This is very important. Friends, to our fellow Canadians, we Albertans are proud Canadians. And tonight, we have elected a government that will stand up and secure a fair deal for Alberta in this great country. There is a deep frustration in this province, a sense that we have contributed massively to the rest of Canada, but that everywhere we turn, we are being blocked in and pinned down. Albertans have contributed over $600 billion to the rest of Canada through fiscal federalism in recent decades. And until recently, we've been a key engine of Canada's prosperity, of growing the middle class, of economic progress, and of social mobility. Our population has doubled in recent decades as we've welcomed newcomers from every corner of Canada people who often left behind the despair of unemployment to enjoy the dignity of work in Alberta's Opportunity Society. We, we Albertans, we Albertans are proud to have helped our fellow Canadians when times were good here and tough elsewhere. But now Albertans, now Albertans are going through a time of trial. We have the highest unemployment outside of Atlantic Canada. Nearly 200,000 Albertans are out of work. Thousands of businesses have closed their doors. Incomes are down. Bankruptcies are up. This is in part because we cannot get our energy to global markets at a fair price. So we Canadians, we Canadians have been blessed with the world's third largest oil reserves and an abundance of natural gas. But, but we have been but we have been targeted, we have been targeted by a foreign funded campaign of special interests seeking to landlock Canadian energy. This means that we Canadians have become captive to the United States as the only market for Canada's largest export product, our energy. As a result, we've been selling our country's greatest asset at fire sale prices, losing billions of dollars of value that belongs to us. That means we've lost uh, money that could have built schools and hospitals across Canada. This giveaway of our energy has caused the flight of tens of billions of dollars of investment from Alberta, and with it the loss of tens of thousands of jobs. And we are subsidizing in the process the U.S. economy while the investment that has fled Canada is fueling an unprecedented oil boom south of the border. It just doesn't make sense, does it? Friends, what I'm doing is explaining to Canadians who are listening the reality that we are living through. Meanwhile, meanwhile, the foreign-funded special interests campaigning against can can Canadian energy have done precisely nothing to stop the doubling of oil production in the United States or to reduce by one single barrel energy coming from OPEC dictatorships or Vladimir Putin's Russia. In other words, in other words, friends, 
we Canadians have been had. And, and in Ottawa, we have a federal government that has made this bad situation We have in Ottawa a federal government that has made a bad situation much worse, killing two major pipelines, including Energy East, that would have helped our friends in Quebec and Atlantic Canada displace foreign oil with Canadian energy. That same, that same federal government, that same federal government is imposed. Go for it. I got to I'm sorry. I got to correct you. It's it we never sh we never should have ended up with the faint hope of one pipeline. It's build those pipes. So that same federal government is imposing new laws that will make it impossible to get pipelines approved in the future. And we have provincial governments that have tried to block our energy. But friend, friends, tonight, all of that changes. Tonight, 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 Albertans have decided that we will no longer passively accept the campaign of defamation against the industry that has helped to create one of the most prosperous and generous societies on earth. So tonight, we say to our fellow Canadians, let us unite together to unleash Canada's full economic potential. Let us renew, let us renew the promise of Confederation as a true economic union. Let, let us begin a new era in Canada, putting behind us all the barriers to trade and mobility that make us poorer. We Albertans, we Albertans love our natural environment and we seek to preserve it. We take seriously, yes, we take seriously the challenge of climate change. We are world leaders in innovating to reduce emissions and shrink the environmental footprint of Canadian energy. And we are united in the need to continue diversifying our economy. But as long as there is a growing global demand for oil and gas, the question is, who will provide it? Will we abandon global energy markets to dictatorships that spread conflict and violence around the world? Or will Canada compete with and displace conflict oil with Canadian energy that is produced at the highest environmental, human rights and labour standards on earth? That's the question. Fellow Canadians, fe fellow Canadians, fellow Canadians, the world needs more ca Canada, the world needs more Canadian energy. This is not just about our shared prosperity, it is also a moral cause. Now let me thank the growing alliance of provincial governments who are champions of jobs, pipelines and our resources. Thank you especially to my friends, Premiers Mo of Saskatchewan, Pallister, Pallister of Manitoba, Ford of Ontario, Higgs of New Brunswick, and the cloud of the Northwest Territories. I, I look forward to deepening our work together to create jobs and shared prosperity. Let me also, this is very important, let me also thank the growing number of progressive Indigenous leaders across Canada who want, who want to be partners in responsible resource development. Alberta's government will sit down with you in the spirit of the treaties, in the spirit of reconciliation, to develop real partnerships that can help move First Nations people from poverty to prosperity through resources. We will create the Aboriginal Opportunities Corporation 
to help First Nations become co-owners of pipelines and other major resource projects. Because, friends, the time has come to move beyond symbolic gestures to real, concrete measures for Indigenous people to benefit from the resources that lie beneath the lands that they first inhabited. Again, this is not just an economic imperative. It is a moral obligation of our generation that we must meet. And now, and now friends, I have a message, another message. A message to those foreign-funded special interests who have been leading a campaign of economic sabotage against this great province. To the Rockefeller Brothers Fund, to the Tides Foundation, to Lead Now, to the David Suzuki Foundation, and to all of the others. Your days of pushing around Albertans with impunity just ended. We Albertans are patient and we're fair-minded, but we've had enough of your campaign of defamation and double standards. So today, today with this election, we begin to stand up for ourselves, for our jobs, and for our future. Today, we Albertans begin to fight back. From this day forward, Whenever you lie about how we produce energy, we will tell the truth assertively. And, when, and we will use every means at our disposal to hold you to account. When multinational companies like HSBC boycott Alberta, we'll boycott them. We will launch a public inquiry into the foreign source of funds behind the campaign to landlock Alberta's energy. And uh, we will ban foreign money from our politics and use every legal tool at our disposal to defend the working women and men of Alberta. And now, friends, please bear, please bear with me for a minute because I have a very important message for us to deliver to our friends in Quebec. Le Quebec, who we admire and with whom we want to work. Le Quebec, and I will, I'm going to speak in French for a moment. Please bear with me, I'll, I'll repeat this in English. Le Quebec et l'Alberta ont toujours été des alliés naturels. Les Albertains admirent les Québécois. Nous partageons des valeurs communes et croyons en un fédéralisme respectueux des champs des compétences provinciales. Quebec and Alberta have always been natural allies. Albertans admire Quebecers, and we share common values and believe in a respectful federalism that respects provincial jurisdiction. Des milliers, oui, c'est vrai, right? Des milliers, des milliers de Québécois ont choisi leur, leur domicile en Alberta. Thousands of Quebecers have chosen to make Alberta their new home. J'ai énormément de respect pour votre Premier ministre François Legault. J'admire le fait que son gouvernement mette l'accent sur la croissance économique et se soit engagé à éliminer la dépendance du Québec envers les pérications. I have great respect for Quebec's Premier François Legault. I admire that his government is focused on economic growth and is committed to ending Quebec's dependence on equalization. Les, les Albertains, it's important that we communicate this message of partnership, friends. Les Albertains sont généreux. En période de prospérité, nous n'avons jamais hésité à partager notre richesse avec les autres provinces. Mais les temps ont beaucoup changé. L'Alberta fait maintenant face à des sérieuses difficultés économiques. Nous vivons une crise de matière d'emploi marquée par un taux de chômage élevé. Albertans are generous. In good times, we never hesitate to share our wealth with other provinces. 
but times have changed with an economic crisis in this province. Uh, pourquoi ces difficultés? Eh bien, l'une des raisons est que nous ne pouvons pas exporter notre pétrole dans les marchés internationaux. Nous avons besoin des pipelines pour la prospérité de tous les Canadiens, y compris les Québécois. We need pipelines for the prosperity of all Canadians, including Quebecers. La décision à prendre n'est pas difficile. Faut-il privilégier le pétrole albertain qui est produit dans le respect des normes environnementales et sociales les plus rigoureuses ou celui des États-Unis et de l'OPEC? Poser la question, c'est y répondre. The question is simple. Do Quebecers want to fuel their economy with ethically produced Canadian energy or with that oil imported from the United States and the OPEC dictatorships? To ask the question is to answer it. And so the decision we need to make is, is this. Uh, so let me, excuse me, let me say this to all Quebecers and to Premier Legault. At a time when Alberta is hurting, we must work together. Si le Québec et les autres provin provinces veulent accepter les transferts fiscaux massifs provenant de l'Alberta, alors, s'il vous plaît, aidez-nous à développer nos ressources naturelles et notre économie. If Quebecers and other provinces want to benefit from masses transfers developed by the hard work and resources of Albertans, then they must be partners with us in developing those resources and getting them to international markets. Friends, friends, today Albertans have chosen hope over fear and unity over division. They have chosen free enterprise values over the politics of resentment. They have rejected the politics of personal destruction and endorsed the most detailed plan ever offered to Alberta voters, 117 pages long with 375 specific commitments. <laughs> commitments to get Alberta working. Friends, tonight, the silent majority has spoken. The silent majority has spoken, not the loud and angry voices on social media. But average Albertans who simply spoke today, those folks who simply want their common sense re values reflected in their government, who want high quality health education and public services, but who understand that we need a vibrant private sector economy in order to pay for those things. <laughs> Albertans who get that governments cannot redistribute wealth unless someone is creating that wealth through their hard work in the first place. <laughs> Albertans who know that we cannot tax and borrow our way to prosperity. Albertans who understand that the carbon tax is all economic pain and no environmental gain and, want, and who want to scrap the carbon tax cash grab. <laughs> Albertans who know that debt is a trap that takes money away from vital public services and sends it to bankers and bondholders. Albertans who believe in our great tradition of school choice because they understand, they understand that parents know better than politicians what's best for their kids. <laughs> Friends, let me thank all of those who have entrusted us with your confidence today. We will strive to honor your confidence every single day to be sure to be sure, our government will make mistakes. We won't be perfect. But I can guarantee you that we'll work every single day to deliver on our commitments to you, to create jobs, to fight for a fair deal in Canada, to make Alberta strong and free. <laughs> Premier, friends, friends, Premier Notley and I spoke earlier this evening I look forward to working with her on an orderly transition. 
And let me thank our Premier for her tremendous public service. As I've said many times, go ahead, please. Please do. As I've said many times before, we are fortunate to have a Premier of such ability, intelligence, and passion for this province. Our disagreements should never diminish our respect for one another as Albertans who are devoted to making life better for our fellow citizens. So, on behalf of all Albertans, thank you, Premier, for your hard work over these four past challenging years. Thank you to your team. While we have policy differences, there can be no doubt that you've always sought to make the right decisions in the service of Albertans according to the best of your judgment. Let me also thank, let me also thank David Kahn, Stephen Mandel, and their teams as well. Albertans, I truly believe Albertans are well served to have political leadership of this caliber. Thank you as well to candidates from all parties who had their courage, the courage to put their names on the ballot. You helped to make democracy happen today. <laughs> Fellow Albertans, it's my hope that we can work together to stop the coarsening of our public discourse, to raise the bar of civility and respect. And while we will always have disagreements, as we should in a democracy, we should let us seek always to express those disagreements without being disagreeable. Thank you, thank you to our remarkable United Conservative team of candidates, a new generation that is ready to lead. To those who have been elected, I cannot wait to get to work with you. And to those who didn't succeed tonight, you contributed to our broader success, for which I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you so much to our thousands of volunteers who have worked so hard to bring us to this moment of hope and change. Thank you to the voters, thank you to the voters of Calgary Lougheed for entrusting me with your confidence once again. And a special thank you to my campaign manager, Tasha Schindel, and our amazing local volunteers for running a brilliant campaign, largely in my absence. Friends, nearly three years ago, we launched an audacious campaign to reunite free enterprise Albertans into one big tent coalition. Many said it couldn't be done, but we overcame enormous obstacles along the way. To all of those who opened their homes and their hearts to me as I visited every corner of the province over the past three years, let me say thank you. I've been moved again and again by the endless generosity of Albertans in building this grassroots movement into the biggest provincial political party in Canada and the next government of Alberta. Folks, let me tell you about one such individual. August the 6th, 2016, I pulled up that blue pickup in front of the Esso station in Hardesty. Doesn't get much more Alberta than Hardesty, by the way. And I was filling up my gas tank. Young fella pulls up behind mine, jumps out, rushes up, starts filling, says to me, excuse me, are you that Kenny guy? I said, yeah. He says, how long before you get rid of this government? I said, probably about three years. He said to me, sir, that's not fast enough. You got to go faster. I said, look, fella, I I'm going as fast as I can, but they will choose when the election is, not us. And he stopped me right there. He said, sir, he got very emotional. He said, sir, please understand, my dad lost his job out here 18 months ago. He's getting depressed now. I've never seen him like this before, and I'm worried about him. And I'm just 17, and I'm the only paycheck for mom and dad and all four of my brothers and sisters. And that young 17-year-old started to tear up in front of me. I realized at any normal time in our Alberta lives, that 17-year-old would be working hard and playing hard, probably not paying a lot of attention, 
to politics, but suddenly the decisions that we made today meant everything for him and his family. So what, I'm sorry, to that young man, wherever he is, I have thought about you every day for the past three years. And, and hundreds of other Albertans who have shared with me their stories of adversity. But to all of them, we say, we finally got it done. Yeah. Folks, I'll just close by saying this. That young man and countless other Albertans are what this is all about. We haven't worked this hard or for this long for politics or for power, but for people. The people who have lost so much. The people at the margins. Tonight and the next four years is for them. It's about doing everything, everything within our power to make it possible for people like that to, to, to achieve their God-given potential in this great land of prosperity and opportunity called Alberta. It's about the single moms struggling to make ends meet. It's about the seniors on fixed incomes who are anxious about paying the bills. It's about the farmers and small business owners who have sleepless, sleepless nights about growing debt. It's about the First Nations people who too often feel like they can't get a fair shot at opportunity. It's about the new Canadians who are stuck in survival jobs because they can't get their degrees or work experience recognized. It's about the young Albertans who are wondering if they have to leave our province to find work. It's about the oil field families who've lost their homes. It's about the lady in Medicine Hat last week who came, came up to me in tears to say, my husband's been working in Ontario for two years. Please get our economy back so he can come home. It's about those people that we work so hard. And so, friends, I stand here tonight with you, with the members of our new government, to say that we will fight for those Albertans and so many more like them. And finally, let me say, speak to those Albertans who did not vote for the United Conservatives today. I respect and honour your choice. We will strive to be a government for all Albertans, not just those who voted for us. <laughs> Albertans, Albertans have given us a mandate to implement the positive ideas in our platform, to bring bold change that gets Alberta back to work. In implementing those policies, we will reach out to those who disagree in a spirit of dialogue to find common ground wherever possible, to listen, and when we're wrong, to change course. Friends, let me close as I began our entire United Alberta movement three years ago by saying that Alberta isn't just a place on a map. It's not just a random collection of people. Alberta is an idea. It's an idea of a free society that believes in the creative power of, of, of human potential, of people unleashed to pursue uh, their, their greatest strengths and passions, a, a belief that strong and resilient individuals, strong communities are better at preventing social pro problems than a big and personal and bureaucratic state. We need to revive the, our belief in those entrepreneurial Alberta values that built this province into the envy of the world. And with your support in the four years to come, that is exactly what we will do, working day and night to renew the Alberta advantage, to renew this province as a place of hope and opportunity for generations to come, an Alberta that is strong and free. God bless you, and God bless Alberta. Thank you very much.